pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you please remain standing for a moment of reflection. Let's pray for our servicemen and women throughout the world and also for those who have passed away in our community. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry. Here. Mr. Donahue. Here. Mr. Evans. Mr. Gaughan. Here. Mr. Rogan. I would like to make a motion to appoint Councilman Perry as temporary chairperson for the Committee on Rules. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it, so moved. I would like to make a motion to appoint Councilman Donahue as temporary chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety. Second. On the question, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, so moved. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A minutes of the regular meeting of the members of Scranton Housing Authority held January 7, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, check received from Comcast in the amount of $257,012.81 for quarterly franchise fee. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, agenda for the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting held February 13, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, controller's report for month ending January 31, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held January 16, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, minutes of the non-uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held January 16, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3G, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held January 16, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3H, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held January 16, 2019. Are there any comments? <clears throat> if not, received and filed. 3I, agenda for the non-uniform Municipal Pension Board meeting held February 20, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3J, tax assessor's report for hearing date to be held March 13, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3K, agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting to be held February 27, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3L, annual financial report for the City of Scranton year ended December 31, 2017, prepared by the Office of the City Controller. Are there any comments? Uh, yes, I have one. Um, on page six, uh, there is a disclaimer that says the following. Um, in the 2017 independent audit, the auditor discovered a $130,609.86 variance. The auditor has been unable to account for or balance this said variance. Uh, so we discussed this in caucus. I'd like to make a motion that Scranton City Council send correspondence to the business administrator and the city controller asking why the auditor was unable to account for or balance this variance and to provide uh, city council with additional information so that we may understand uh, why this disclaimer is in the independent audit. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Do I have a second. second? There's a second. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. So moved. Uh, do any other council members, if not, received and filed? Any other comments on that? Received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? Uh, I have two announcements. The rescheduled caucus meeting with our Chief of Police, Carl Graziano, and Lackawanna County DA Mark Powell will take place next Monday, March 4th at 515 to discuss the topics of homelessness in the city and the opioid epidemic. Also next Monday, March 4th at 545, we'll hold a public hearing for item 6A on tonight's agenda, the installation of no parking signs along Broadway Street, along the bike lanes at the trail crossings near the University of Scranton Sports Complex. I have uh, one additional. Um, I'd like to announce, uh, Scranton City Council would like to announce that today, February 25th, uh, City Council will begin accepting resumes for those 
uh, City of Scranton residents that may be interested in serving on the Board of Ethics. The deadline to submit a resume is Monday, March 11th at 4.30 p.m. Please include a cover letter with your submission. You may hand deliver them to our office, send by U.S. Mail uh, to City of Scranton Municipal Building, 340 North Washington Avenue, second floor, Scranton 18503, Attention City Council's office, or you may email those resumes and cover letters to the city clerk, Lori Reed, at lreed at scrantonpa.gov. Uh, just briefly, it's worth noting uh, the board's composition, structure, and obligations for those residents that may wish to submit a resume for consideration. The board shall be composed of five residents of the city of Scranton. The members shall be appointed two by the mayor, two by city council, and one by the controller. The terms of service for members shall be three years. However, the initial terms of service for members shall be staggered with one member serving a term of one year, two members serving a term of two years, and two members serving a term of three years. The initial board staggered term shall be determined by lottery. Once the board is seated, they shall elect a chair and vice chair at their annual meeting. The board shall appoint a solicitor and a secretary and other staff deemed as necessary. These particular positions need not be members of the board. The powers and duties of the Board of Ethics are summarized as follows. Receive complaints of violations to the Ethics Code, Appoint the investigating officer who is a member in good standing of the Lackawanna County Bar to conduct any investigations and issue findings. Hold hearings, issue subpoenas, take testimony and issue orders, adopt rules and regulations to administer, implement and enforce and interpret the Code of Ethics. Conduct educational programs to promote the ethical conduct of public officials, city employees and individuals and groups doing business with the city annually review the statements of financial interest filed pursuant to section four of the code. Due to their special position, board members have a higher duty than other public officials to avoid conflicts of interest. Members shall, should be models of ethical behavior. In addition to the duties and responsibilities, the following are prohibited. No member may hold or campaign for any other public office. No member may hold office in any political party or political organization or political committee. No member may hold a position of employment or appointment with any municipal government or any board or commission formed by the city of Scranton. No member may actively participate in or contribute to any political campaign in the city of Scranton for a candidate running for or from the office of mayor, city council, controller, and tax collector. No member shall receive compensation but shall be reimbursed by the city for documented expenses actually incurred. Uh, we are also going to ask the administration to put this document um, on the city's website and, and hopefully the, uh, there will be an article in the newspaper as well. That's all I have. Thank you. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight, Joan Holdenwanitz. Joan Holdenwanitz, city resident and taxpayer. Uh, first thing is um, the Friends of the Scranton Public Library will hold their quarterly book sale starting tomorrow, February 26th through Sunday, March 3rd. On uh, second floor of the Marketplace at Steamtown, right in front of the Crunch Gym. You can get books, hardcover, softcover, CDs, DVDs, uh, anything you want. One to two dollars is all we charge, so it's a good deal. Um, in motions, if you would please give us a status on the Arcadis study and where we stand in that process. Also, last week, February 20th, was supposed to be the uh, first meeting of the Downtown Scranton Residents Association. Uh, it got canceled due to weather. If anybody finds out in the coming days if they're rescheduling that, if you would announce that at a future meeting, I would appreciate it. Also, uh, I too looked at item 3L, uh, the annual financial report for fiscal year 2017. And I too read the disclaimer and would like to find out what this $130,000 variance involves. I pulled up the 2017 audit and I could not find any mention of a variance of that nature in any of the findings. Uh, so I would like uh, an explanation. Also, quickly going through the report, 
there are a lot of um, statistics that are very interesting. For example, on page 18, and these page numbers are what appear on the bottom of the pages themselves. Page 18, in 2017, we had an operational deficit of 42,132,085 dollars and 14 cents. There's no narrative accompanying this, just, just the bare fact. On page 84, there is a chart of expenditures by function for the five-year period 2013 through 2017. Keep in mind that 2013 was Mayor Doherty's last year in office, and it accounts for the first four years of Mayor Courtright's tenure. Under the mayor's office, from 2013 through to 2017, um, his expenditures increased 82 percent from, from $76,760 to $139,591. The law office, and this shouldn't be too surprising, they had an increase of 76 percent. There's a category called special items. And I guess that's a catch-all for anything you can't fit into another function. That item increased 266%. And for the total of all these functional areas, the increase over that five-year period was 99%. So basically, expenditures doubled in five years. Uh, on page 25, revenue by source of income. The one line that interested me was taxes. And I assume that's all taxes. It increased a total of 43% over five years from $50,743,738 to $72,000,000. $378,471. Page 26, real estate tax increased 77% over five years. Page 27, the assessed valuation of taxable, taxable property since 2008. This is a 10-year period. That went down 0.025%. Okay, so the value of our properties is basically stagnant for 10 years. And on page 30, this is an eye-opener, net bonded debt per capita for every citizen in the city, the 76,000, 77,000 people we have now. From 2008, it was $933 per resident, rose to $1,302.27 in 2017 for an increase in debt of 40% per citizen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations. Uh, first, if there are any questions or comments or items of feedback from Council regarding the Commissioner's legislation last week that passed regarding the citywide alerta, uh, we'll be happy to take those. I know sometimes when there's legislation that passes at the county level that corresponds uh, to city legislation or city priorities, sometimes there's feedback or questions um, either now or at the end of my remarks or after the meeting, I'll be happy to take any questions or comments that council has. Of course, we're always open for that dialogue, but I know especially at a time like this. Uh, so if there's anything, feel free to stop me or tell me after my remarks conclude. I will be happy to work with you on anything that you see fit with that. Uh, second, uh, NeighborWorks in Northeast Pennsylvania is doing their free home repair program. Uh, this is part of NeighborWorks National Volunteer Week. It involves more than 400 volunteers from around the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic United States. It provides free home repairs for up to 60 elderly, modest income homeowners in Lackawanna County. It includes porch and step repair, interior, exterior painting, 
wheelchair ramp construction, weatherization, and more. Homeowners must be 60 years of age or older and meet income guidelines for the program. The work takes place from June 24th through 28th of 2019. The application deadline is March 15th. And to apply, seniors just have to call the Lackawanna County Area Agency on Aging at 570-963-6740 and request a NeighborWorks referral for the summer 2019 volunteer project. Uh, third, the Lackawanna County Arts Engage Task Force is seeking artists for their upcoming Butterfly Public Art Program. Individuals, community groups, school groups, and businesses are welcome to paint ceramic butterflies for an upcoming public arts project. It's part of an upcoming multi-phase project on the subject of personal transformation. Butterflies must be painted in acrylic paint. Art supplies will be provided for groups and individuals that are unable to attain them. The butterflies will be displayed on Courthouse Square during festivities coming up this summer. To request butterflies to paint, please call 570-963-6590, extension 102, or visit the Lackawanna County Arts and Culture Department on Facebook. Also, in Parks and Recreation, our Junior Golf Clinic and Women's Golf Clinic are now open for registration. The Junior Golf runs from June 14th through July 5th, once a week, ages 8 through 16, and there's also a Tee Golf for ages 4 through 7. The Women's Golf runs from April 22nd through May 13th, and all those programs are at Scott's Greens Golf Club. The cost is $60 for all programs. Uh, for more information or to register, call the Parks and Recreation Office at 570 963 6764. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bob Bolas. Evening, Council. Bob Bolas Grant. <clears throat> One of the quick questions I have. Uh, we're concerned about four parking spaces by Kildare's with PennDOT and everything else. I mean, I think it's kind of a joke in the city right now that we're worried about where we're gonna have four parking spaces, either make Kildare's pay for the pay spaces for the year, since it's accommodating them, or create four spaces. I don't think we should be wasting a lot of time and energy on that when we sit here and we lose 500 parking spaces. Mr. Gawhan, this is what we had discussed in the past, a letter to the mall and the people there with the parking authority. We paid almost $5 million for those 500 parking spaces. They belong to us. <clears throat> they don't belong to Basiliga. They don't belong to anybody else. Yet we're restricted. You have to walk through the stupid mall, get a ticket, spend two hours doing this, doing that. I want our 500 parking spaces unreserved, no games when we want to park there. That's our right. We paid for them. And I would expect you, Mr. Gahan, to keep heading on this issue. This is what we brought up in the past. And uh, to spearhead this getting resolved, that uh, we have unrestricted parking at the mall and have designated 500 parking spaces that are priority to the mall since we paid for them already. And that's a responsibility I believe is on council right now. And if it isn't uh, carried through, then I believe we have a breach of contract between the uh, mall and the city, or we have an ethics violation between the mall and the city representatives that put this together. But either way, I want our 500 spaces back. I don't care if we park there at 2 o'clock in the morning or we park there at Saturday night. Those are our spaces, bought and paid for. Then I want them back. And I think everybody else does. The other issue I have, again, since you spearheaded the ethics, Hinton on Nayog Park, no doubt now, present day, it's a violation of the ethics code that's been enacted by the city. Either it's adjudicated one way or the other, or that sale is canceled and it's put out to open bidding. If anybody has that opportunity to bid it, excluding Hinton till he leaves office, and then he may have that opportunity. But till then, the sale should be negated. It's a major conflict and it's a major interest. The other thing that I see that we need to do, and it's not been done and I get tired of talking about it, the mall should be reassessed. It's an absolute joke and a slap in the face of everybody in this city 
including the businesses that are over assessed. I went through it with the church that was only worth a dollar, yet it was assessed at some ridiculous amount of money where 50 grand in taxes are owed on a $35,000 investment. That should be zero today because it never had an assessment. Yet the mall comes in here and doesn't pay anything. We don't push an assessment. We don't push the school board, who's really put the screws to everybody in this whole city, to file a reassessment and we get our just dues. It's unfair to every business and every taxpayer within this city that the mall is getting away with what they want, including the parking garage that we gave them a couple million dollars to fix. Take a ride through those garages and see what you're paying for. These are the issues in the city, and then people wonder why we throw a casted doubt on everybody here, because we're not getting the job done, and we're letting it go on and on. And remember, you screw it up today, you're not gonna undo it tomorrow, because it's just getting worse and worse. The last thing is, as far as the mayor goes, I mean, everybody wants the mayor to come out, say this, say that, and do this. Anybody been in the legal system like I have, and maybe one day you gentlemen will be. Who knows? We hope you never do. But the mayor has his legal right, and that's to be silent. He doesn't have to disclose what's going on until the appropriate time comes forward, whether it's in a court of law or it's through some other legal uh, avenue. So I think we need to sit behind our mayor right now and support him for what's going on until there's something otherwise. But right now everybody's trying to say he's guilty of something, there's all kind of stupid crazy accusations going on and demands that he come forward. No one has to incriminate themselves in this particular situation. I'm sure your solicitor would be more than happy to kind of brief you on the law as to what happens when that happens. So I think what we need to do is just kind of sit back and uh, Wait and see what happens. Give them every opportunity and the law to do its job. And the last thing is, uh, thank you. The last thing is the uh, storage containers that were put in and acted here. Containers coming in here like ship containers or pods are considered now structures that needs to be enforced. They need to go through the proper zoning, proper permitting, and everything to put them here. And that's not being done by Hinton or the city council. All right, thank you, Mr. Bowles. Okay, I understand, you. but you know, we, got only get, we gotta wait a week to talk to. And uh, I think that needs to be implemented and enforced. Again, if it isn't, we're back into the ethics issue. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ron Elman. Well, it's good to see some of you made it back. You know, the people in Harrisburg just don't seem to comprehend how serious this school dilemma is. I know, I know some of you gentlemen have, have talked to people that are in fear of losing their houses like I do at the grocery store every time I go, it's terrible. What we need immediately, I mean immediately, is for Harrisburg to increase the classrooms, 30, 35 pe uh, students or more, and we need to fire 200 teachers or more. There's just no way this city can survive with all this these problems that are coming and that we presently have. It's just, it's just no way to do it. You guys know it. The voters know it. Nobody does nothing. We got a runaway out of control school board that with no leadership. That's the, what you get from what goes on around here all the time. And now, about Mr. O'Malley's choice for a, a running mate, this lady might have an excellent 
resume, but she has a full-time law practice, and she works for the county half-time, part-time. A commissioner is a full-time position. It pays a full-time salary, and this lady needs to give up her two part-time jobs, whatever they, you call them, or else forget her political aspirations. I, I read Mr. Vope's article in, in the paper all the time. Sometimes I agree with him, and sometimes it's a bunch of hot air. I remember one of them where he said he had to go to New York to have a meeting about Scranton, like there's not enough fine restaurants around here. Let me tell you real quick, Valentine Day, Roseanne took me to that Uno Chicago Grill, and you couldn't have a better dinner. It just was excellent, the service was excellent, the place is nice. Uh, we had a coupon, that's why we went, because I always go to a Mexican restaurant or a buffet. It, it just was as good as it could be. Mr. Vope should try it sometime instead of bad mouth and, and, and thinking there's no fine restaurants in this city for him. I want to read you a short little paragraph right here. We need more leaders that are intelligent are educated, and most of all have integrity. Integrity. Wait till you hear who said that. Unfortunately, that's in short supply in our area. That's from Mr. Vope in last Saturday's paper. I don't know how somebody could demean people of this whole county like that because that's exactly what he's done here, promoting his fix-it political stance. I find that statement very offensive to voters, to people, Republicans, Democrats, Independents. It, it's, a, it's a disgrace for him to say something like that about our community. To me, Mr. Vope is the past. What was good then isn't necessarily good now. I really wish I was, I don't know, 40, 50 years younger. I'd run for commissioner right now, and I'd be a hell of a good commissioner. I'd probably be the best commissioner money could buy. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, that's the last name on the sign-in sheet. Is there anybody else who would like to address council tonight? Um, may I approach and give you a paper? Thank you. Thanks. My name is Jay Walsh. I'm a Scranton City resident. Um, last week, Mr. Rogan and I had a little banter back and forth. Um, my father was law enforcement. And he always taught me, when they come for you, and they say, well, Mr. Perry, we got you on about six counts, 10 counts. You might spend 20 to 30 years in jail, nine out of 10 times you get diarrhea of the mouth because you don't think you're the only one that should go down on the whole issue. Um, the other issues that we talked about was the garbage tax fee. Dunmore charges $150. That's what it costs to collect. In Scranton, we charge $300 on 2,700 odd residents, okay? So there's over $4 million that are floating around where? 
what do you guys do with that $4 million? Do you divide it amongst yourselves like they do with the uh, fines and court costs down at the county courthouse? So, and I know you didn't vote for it. Smart move. <laughs> and then we had another issue about the county prison. Now, Mr. Rogan says it's not in your jurisdiction. Well, it's in the county charter, okay? Being in the county charter, and I checked this with law because I like to follow up and basically, there is precedent for you being held responsible for the, um, what went on in the county prison. You may not think so, but then I often tell politicians, when you're running for office, you better have a good handle on the law because if you don't, you're liable to find something that you're responsible for that you didn't know you're responsible for. So I just kind of want to set the record straight for Mr. Rogan. You are responsible, okay? You're under the county charter. It may be not directly, but you are, and there's precedence to hold you accountable, both personally and professionally, okay? Now, I'm sure you all have identification insurance, okay? But it can be pierced and then they can go after your assets on a uh, personal level. And there is precedent for it. I'm not making this up. I just looked up the law and where the precedent was. So um, you're gonna find some very interesting things in this handout that I gave you. And, and, and really, uh, the quote that I wanna bring Mr. Lockwood in step with most people in this country are uninformed, okay? And for those who read newspapers and watch news are ill-informed, okay? The political pundits all are aware of my work, okay, as you guys are. And Jimmy Lockwood fails to report it. Why? You have to ask Jimmy. But um, I think that uh, my, my work gets reported on uh, podcasts and other small medium streams, but it does get reported. So the flyer is self-explanatory, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Anybody else like to address council? Marie Schumacher. Uh, first, Mr. Perry, you uh, said the Chief Graziano is coming next week. Will it be here in City Council Chambers? Uh, no, I believe it'll be uh, in our room at, during caucus. Why? I mean, I'm the one that's who how, brought that's it That's how up. we had I it cannot... set up. I mean, I'm certainly not against it. it that, well, I'm not you, against it at all. Why so. don't the three of you take a vote tonight and see where you want to have it? I mean, somebody make a motion and... Well, before I would, I would, then, I would want to let him know. it would be on ECTV. I couldn't, I couldn't make the, I had a, the, the work session for last Tuesday conflicted with the schedule I'd already set, but I managed to watch that on YouTube. So, uh, but there's no YouTube in there, and I think it would be grossly unfair. I, I just have a very hard time getting Yeah, there. I mean, I, that's just where it was scheduled to be held. I have nothing against it whatsoever. Well. I would ask one of you to make a, a motion that it be held here. Uh, next, um, last year's budget for which you all voted, I believe, said the Scranton plan contribution reinstates a financial commitment to the plan previously suspended by the city. The 2019 budget includes a $150,000 contribution to assist with promotional activities for the prospective LERTA adjustments and the Opportunity Zone program. Now, that $150,000 flew out the door pretty fast. Uh, to whom did it go? You don't know? I'll, I'll look into it. You voted for the budget with $150,000 in I on a plan? I, I didn't vote for the budget. Oh, okay. Can is, you, what, what, what is your specific question? Is the plan, who, who is the money going to, and where is the Scranton plan? Is it on the website? We can, we can find that out. I'm not exactly sure where the $150,000 went, but if it's a line item in the budget, obviously they're, 
there is some there's an expenditure and there's a paper trail so we'll certainly get that information for you and I believe the Scranton plan is an arm of the chamber is pardon it's an arm of the Chamber of Commerce okay uh, so it might be on their website possibly but, but I'll so so we'll you think the 150 it. grand went to the I, I don't okay. I don't know I just know okay well I'll wait I'll wait till plan. next week okay and I'll just keep on going now again uh, two weeks ago when you last met uh, I believe it was the 11th or was it two three weeks ago maybe um, <clears throat> mr. Evans who's not here tonight said uh, he and councilman Go uh, Donahue we're going to meet with the to review the uh, have a work session on the Arcadis draft and that next week or the week after there would be a public work session so we're, if you met last week so then we got a preliminary draft last week okay and okay and, and we're gonna be scheduling a presentation in here at the presentation in here at during it's, our caucus, but it's going to be in here. So it, it wasn't last week, weeks. so that means it's next week? No, well, we have the chief next week, so we're looking at either the week after or the week after that. Oh. I, I, I mean, I think it's time Well, because it's, it's, it's time consuming, so we want to make sure Is we it, have that full. Has it been amended to uh, deal with anything other than how much we're going to be charged for the stormwater fee, such as a plan on what it's going to provide? All that information will be released and will be gone over in the caucus. So, I mean, like I haven't gone through the full preliminary report yet, but it should occur within the next, I'd imagine, two or three weeks. I wasn't at this meeting. Well, that, you know, Marie, that's what we were told. I, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. Arcadis and Tony Dill or whatever his name is is going to come in here and have a public caucus and explain the full report. And I think yes. it will take at least an hour. Correct, Councilman Donahue? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I for me to speculate on timing. different things. What I have a problem with is Wayne Evans tells us that they're going to do it, and then the following week or maybe the next week we'll have uh, we'll have this presentation with Mr. Gilt. Now, now well, we're right back to so, maybe next week, maybe a week after that, or a week after that. I, I don't. We see we're not setting the. They're the ones that had the ball is in their court. Tony Dill and Arcadis. We're we're at their mercy. Arcadis. When they have the final report and they're ready to come forward and present it to council, I mean, I know Mrs. Reed is in contact with Mr. Dill to coordinate that. And again, it should happen within the next two to three weeks is my guess. You know, considering how overrun this project is, how much have we spent over the, have we spent over the- I don't the, have that information in front of me, but certainly could get that for you. Okay, one more comment? Sure. Um, Blight, as I said, I, I listened to that, the, um, the work session that was held last Tuesday and mm -hmm. it didn't look as though it was well attended. No, I don't think they showed a shot of the of the um, audience are here today. But I would like to know how many people came out to that and also, you know, there's not a day goes by that I do not have memories of of Rocky Glen. And it's because I have to do the dodgems every day on our city streets. That report did not say, and I'm really offended by this, the county uh, as well, that report did not put anything on the city, on our government. I would venture to say as much as keep people out of Scranton is the condition of our roads, the fact that you can barely find a house because if you're lucky enough to find a street sign you can read, uh, then you look for a house number and nobody bothers to put house numbers on there, not hardly anybody, some people do. And that's, uh, you know, that's something that's supposed to be done by this city. So uh, I really, well, I you, really think that report is, is, a, is an affront. It, it always goes back on us taxpayers, not what the city contributes to why people don't want to be here and high taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident, taxpayer. Uh, once again, going back a couple of weeks, uh, let's substitute the word homeless for vagrant. Vagrant used to be a crime, and uh, 
unjustifiably so due to the actions of some states. Um, <clears throat> these people live in the moment and yeah, they have a lot of problems and probably drugs and alcohol are a big part of it, but you know, you have that couple of hours of uh, gratification as opposed to saving $5 at a time towards one month's rent over a year. Um, <clears throat> last week, or the week before last, I'm pretty sure we announced that recycling would be in trash a day later. And uh, last Friday, I didn't put my papers out because of uh, <clears throat> uh, inclement weather, and I didn't want uh, paper mache in front of my house. Uh, by Saturday morning, so I looked out and the papers were taken Friday, so all I'm asking is can we please get it <clears throat> together and get it straight so I can put them out at the right time. I don't need them sitting around my house either. And it is a fine to throw viable recycling into the trash. Um, Hopefully with your work session on quality of life, we'll have a friendlier and uh, finds only after an extended period. Uh, the last one was just too heavy handed and uh, it's not right. You've got to give people a chance to do something and it might not even be good weather or uh, whatever to uh, uh, that you could even get out there and uh, do what you have to do. <clears throat> Next week, I presume that we're going to be talking about decriminalizing cannabis. And uh, did anybody read the Kelly section Sunday in the Scranton Times? Well, it turned out he confessed that he had a problem with alcohol and it caused a heart problem. And uh, he was in very serious shape. He had to go into rehab. So it's out in the paper. I mean, it's not like an anonymous type thing. And, and uh, I wish the best for him. I like his column. And, and uh, the point being that you're taking, uh, still talking about decriminalizing when Jimmy Carter <laughs> was ran on it as president in 1976. <laughs> And uh, that's 42 years ago, I guess. And uh, uh, we're still talking about it. And uh, granted, anything you consume is no good. Street uh, drugs are, could be tainted with other things. I've often wondered when somebody's gonna come down with some uh, poisoning from the spice business. Uh, maybe they'll spray it on some weak uh, wacky backy or something you know, and uh, juice that up a bit. But my point is, uh, it's time we start asking people other than law enforcement and the DA's office, uh, just as an alternative, uh, maybe the ACLU or some other, um, some other organization that, that might be concerned with it. And, Consider all of the facts then and not just I you know the chief is a way better person than I could ever be as, as far as I'm totally happy with them, but you know he, he did have a death in the family from uh, uh, some incident years back and uh, It does taint your opinion you can tend to uh, and I also hear opioids does anybody watch television, the commercials on arthritic medication and uh, psoriasis, like autoimmune diseases and stuff? You ever see uh, uh, can cause new or worsening heart failure, can cause uh, uh, liver and kidney function problems, can cause, uh, it, it just goes right down the line and they constantly come up with these alternatives to opioids. And my point is that, you know, we do have a definitely an opioid problem and prescription drug problem with them being overprescribed. But 
for aging type diseases and pains like arthritis that never go away, maybe uh, taking a heart attack is a poor alternative to uh, being handed a, an opioid pill prescribed by a doctor after verification of the condition. And thank you and have a good night. I wish that bell would go somewhere. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Dobson. Is there any other speakers tonight? Uh, before we get started, I just want to, uh, I'll just, on um, Ms. Schumacher's comments, if we can send something out to uh, DA Powell's office and to Chief Graziano about moving the meeting, do you, I'm sure you guys don't have an issue with moving it from out here. Uh, let them know that we want to move our March 4th, 515 meeting to Chambers, and then if you want to make CCTV aware, uh, SCTV aware that uh, if they can be here to get that televised for everybody to see. And that, again, that meeting is going to be regarding the homelessness and the opioid situation and uh, kind of how uh, the city police and our district attorney's office, what, they're, what they plan, not what they plan to do, but what plans are in place and how they handle things uh, along those two fronts. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Donahue, any comments or motions tonight? I got nothing at this time. Mr. Gahan. Any comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. Um, just two things, Mrs. Reed. Uh, 824 Pittson Avenue. Um, I, I know I sent this in an email. I just want to make sure it gets in the record. Uh, there's a woman that lives next door to this property. She has numerous concerns. So if we could just make sure we uh, stay on top of that with the licensing and inspections department. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was West Locust Street and Parrot Avenue. We've sent this in before, but a woman had reported that a hole had opened up uh, in that vicinity. So if we could send that again to the licensing and inspections department. Um, also, we did receive a letter. I know I've been going back and forth with the gentleman over in the Watson Street area. Uh, we received a letter February 8th, 2019 from Pennsylvania American Water um, about issues in the area of the 1100 blocks of Watson Street, Rundle Street, and Sloan Street. Um, there's several issues uh, in response to the letter that we sent. Uh, American Water is, uh, sent staff to clean and inspect the sewer pipes over there and catch basins that were described in the areas that were owned by Pennsylvania American Water. Uh, once an assessment of the sewer facilities in the area had been made, um, Pennsylvania American Water said they will take action in repairing or replacing any sewer pipes, manholes, or catch basins that do not meet their standards. Um, and then there's some other things in this letter here, but they are taking the uh, issue seriously. And uh, we did copy Mr. Norton, um, who reported that problem uh, to me. So I appreciate that. Also, we did get a letter from Mayor Courtright. Um, I sent, we, Council sent a letter January 30th, 2019, asking for an update on the shared services committee between the city and the school district. Uh, Mayor Courtright said, I am in receipt of your letter. Uh, dated January 30th, the city is addressing several of the proposed initiatives for shared services. A brief summary of key items of significant value are as follows. Uh, the city and school district have both adopted the extension of the LERDA designation. The city is working with its Act 47 coordinator, uh, the Pennsylvania Economy League, to convert its business privilege and mercantile taxes to a payroll tax with a target implementation of 2020. The city is hopeful that the school district will also adopt this conversion. Uh, the city is presently awaiting a proposal for the soccer field project, at which point the city and school district can further evaluate the feasibility and value of this initiative. The city would be interested in establishing cooperation with the school district regarding recycling and would like the Shared Services Committee to explore this possibility further. So that is the, the correspondence that uh, we received from the mayor. And we did talk in the caucus about um, any correspondence that we get from the mayor or any department heads that we would uh, consider starting to put, put uh, that in third order. So that's included in the backup. Um, Mrs. Reed and I will be meeting with representatives from the University of Scranton on March 7th uh, to discuss the internship program that we've been working on. So I'm hopeful that uh, once that meeting occurs that you know, we'll, we'll uh, finalize our plans and we'll have an intern in uh, the city council office relatively soon. 
Um, also, I received an email from residents on Greenwood Avenue, and they would like to thank the DPW for their quick action in filling a major potholes on Greenwood Avenue. Uh, the residents reported they called February 11th. They immediately received the call back, and the issue was resolved on February 15th. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I only have two quick uh, issues to address. The first one is on North South Street. Uh, with the weather starting to get, break a little bit, get cold a little bit, and then in the rain, of course, the potholes are inevitable. Uh, North South Street, uh, there's been some reports of some potholes. If we can have DPW with some cold patch, uh, check out that area and see what can be done. And then also, I've received uh, some inquiries on the update on the Novembrino project. The last time it was posted, there was supposed to be uh, some activity on site in January. There hasn't been any yet. So if we can just get an update uh, from the administration on what the holdup is and if there's a new time frame or if something shifted or changed, and then uh, I will definitely get back to them. Uh, and that, that those are the only two issues that I have for tonight. Thank and you. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Perry, I had sure, one thing. Sure, go right ahead. Um, Mrs. Reed, if we could find out, uh, I had it here someplace, but I don't know what I did with it, uh, the budget for the stormwater. Um, for the uh, Arcadis report, what our the city's budget was, if we could just find out from Mr. Bozzoni. Okay, thank you. Okay. 5B, uh, for introduction and ordinance amending file of the council number 50, 2018, and ordinance amending file of the council number 22, 2016, and ordinance entitled, defining and authorizing tax exemptions from real property tax in order to stimulate residential, commercial, and other business activity in certain areas in the city of Scranton, establishing an exemption schedule and procedures for obtaining exemptions, providing for non-permissible e exemptions, and limiting amendment thereto in order to expand the eligible areas, increase the duration of each exemption, and to lift the cap on each exemption by deleting Section 7, non-permissible, in its entirety due to a clerical error. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that Item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor, uh, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I have it so moved. 5C for introduction of resolution appointment of Wayne Beck, 105 Yasu Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to serve as a member of the Land Bank, effective February 9, 2019. Mr. Beck is being appointed to a five year term, which will expire on February 9, 2024. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. So moved. 5D for introduction of resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a beautiful blocks program proposal by and between the city of Scranton and NeighborWorks, northeastern Pennsylvania, to encourage groups of neighbors to improve their homes by providing matching grants for exterior improvements. At this time, I'll entertain a, moment, a motion that item 5D be introduced to its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Um, I just want to take a second and explain what this is and talk a little bit about it. So I'm just going to read right from the legislation, the program overview, um, because I think this is, this is the type of uh, vision, this is the type of program that the city really needs. And I, I think this is just... Um, something that the administration really should and neighbor work should be applauded uh, for. So the program overview uh, it says through a partnership between the city of Scranton and NeighborWorks Northeastern Pennsylvania, the beautiful blocks program will encourage groups of neighbors to improve their homes by providing matching grants for exterior improvements. The median listing price of homes in Scranton is just over one hundred thousand dollars, while the national median listing price is approximately two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. The Beautiful Blocks program seeks to not only narrow this disparity, but also build community through concentrated home improvement projects that beautify a neighborhood. The Beautiful Blocks program is modeled after the City of Oswego's successful Renaissance Block Challenge grant program. 
The goal of the program is to provide an incentive for groups of five or more neighbors to work together to make exterior improvements to their homes, which will make neighborhoods more attractive places to live and increase, uh, improve, increase property values over time. Through the program, each property owner can receive a matching grant of up to $1,000 for exterior home improvements. These grants will afford Scranton residents the opportunity to define their neighborhoods and take the revitalization of the city into their own hands. Uh, the budget for this program in the first year with grant funds, it, uh, that equals $50,000. Program administration, $10,000. Trailer tools and equipment is up to $8,000 for a total of $68,000. Um, you know, Councilman Evans had approached uh, myself and I think other members of council about this program back in the summer because he had, you know, seen how successful this was in the city of Oswego, New York. And again, I have to applaud him and the administration for the foresight and neighbor works to uh, try to implement this program. I think that this is going to help kickstart neighborhood revitalization in the city by promoting development, restoration, and in some cases, preservation of our neighborhoods. And I'm hoping, uh, as was the case in Oswego and in similar programs throughout the country, that this will have a domino effect and spread to other parts of the city and continue to get bigger um, each and every year. The other thing I wanted to point out uh, was some of the, uh, what it takes to be eligible for this. So as I was mentioned earlier, it will be open to groups of five or more neighbors, providing that the following requirements are met. All homes obviously must be located in the city of Scranton. Grants must be used for exterior home improvements only. Neighboring homes must be located on the same street or block. If a block has previously received a beautiful blocks grant, they may reapply after a two-year period. However, at least 50% of the homes must not have participated um, in the past. The grants are going to be awarded through a very competitive um, application process and are going to be awarded based upon the availability of funding and the number and quality of applications received. I think the uh, last year in Oswego, there was over 170 homeowners that had applied for their grant program. So again, I think this does a number of different things. It will help kickstart the revitalization in some of these neighborhoods, and it might bring together neighbors that wouldn't usually maybe get together on some sort of project. So again, with some of the other things that we've tried to do here, we're trying to give people in the city an incentive to upgrade their properties, and we're going to provide a matching grant of up to $1,000. And I have to, again, um, applaud NeighborWorks as well. Uh, they are a group that it seems everything that they touch ends up being successful. So um, again, I applaud the mayor, the administration, um, and I hope that I know that this program is going to be successful. Thank you. Yep. All those in favor of introduction, signify saying aye. 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 Right. Opposed? Ayes haven't, so moved. Sixth order, 6A reading by title, file of the council number 56, 2019, an ordinance authorizing installation of no parking signs along the northerly and southerly sides of Broadway Street, along the bicycle lanes, in the vicinity of the trail crossings near the University of Scranton Sports Complex that were installed in conjunction with the LHVA Scranton Safety Improvements Project. You've heard reading by title on item 6A. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question, uh, we were discussing in caucus, we're going to have a public hearing on this. Uh, what, and what time will that be at? Uh, the public hearing is going to be March 4th, 545. So March 4th, 545. Thank you. It's it, going to be right here. In council chambers, where they usually are. Right here. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes haven't, so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption. File of the Council Number 55, 2019, authorizing the Secretary of Transportation to acquire right of ways necessary for the multi-bridge project document number as noted. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of Item 7A. Second. On the question? Yeah, I just want to reiterate again, as I have on the last few weeks with this legislation, that the bridges included in this project are the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge over the railroad, Elm Street Bridge over, Lacqu over the Lackawanna River, North Main Avenue over Leggett's Creek, and Parker Street over the Lackawanna River. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry. 
Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 100, 2019. Appointment of Mary Pat D. Felice, 1322 Schlager Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the position of Executive Director, Office of Economic and Community Development, effective March 1, 2019. Ms. D. Felice will be replacing Linda Abley, who is retiring, effective February 28, 2019. As temporary chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. Se on the question? Yes, on the question. I just wanted to uh, wish Mrs. Abley the best in her retirement and thank her for, I think it was 29 years of service to the Long city, time. which is an accomplishment in and of itself. Um, and I wanted to wish uh, Mrs. Uh, DeFleece the best of luck in her new position. Wish her well. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for Adoption. Resolution number 101, 2019, authorizing the Director of the Department of Public Works of the City of Scranton to sign and submit the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation application for traffic signal approval for traffic signal permit numbers as noted, Mulberry Street, and Monroe Avenue, Hitchcock Court, Quincy Avenue, associated with the University of Scranton's project to further improve the safety of the existing pedestrian crossings. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As temporary chair for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. I just want to thank uh, the University of Scranton for continually trying to do more, especially in that area of uh, furthering uh, safety. So what they're going to do here is install rectangular rapid flashing beacons um, at Mulberry Street and Monroe Ave and Hitchcock Court and Quincy Ave. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaunt? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for Adoption. Resolution number 102, 2019, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into an addendum to the agreement between the University of Scranton and the City of Scranton for the maintenance of the in-pavement LED crosswalk warning lights on Mulberry Street, dated April 21, 2016. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. If there's no more further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned.